You know, this morning on my way into the studio, I was at a red light right here on 48th Street in New York. Uh, you know, of course, it's a very expensive neighborhood. And a panhandler came over with a paper cup. He didn't say a word, so you know, I began to dig into my cup holder and I to grab some money. And, and as I was rolling down the windows, our eyes connected. It was a black man approximately my age. So, you know, here we were on a day the nation celebrates Martin Luther King, one of us sort of reflecting on that progress or progress being made, the other maybe underscoring the fact that there's still some work to be done. Now, I realize that this man's story, it could be one of many things, right? He could be mentally ill, drug user, or he could have made some bad decisions in life. But we know that the, as a nation that there's still work to be done. This work should not be defined by race, as millions of mentally ill, poor, or drug addicted in this country come from all races and re religions. In fact, the nation has become a melting pot of folks that feel left behind and voiceless. Still, even as the journey looks arduous and never ending, all we really have to do is to look at how far we've come. It's something I think we should be proud of as a nation, and it's something that should fuel our resolve for the future as a nation. Celebrating Martin Luther King also is something that should fuel our resolve and commitment to be better people in return that will make our country a better place for all. Joining me now to discuss, Kerry Sheffield and Ron Christie. You know, uh, Ron, I, I hate the, uh, that the race keeps, is brought up so much in this country for so many issues, I, I, you know, no matter what it is. And, and we, the issues and the problems that we have really aren't race-bound, in my mind, is more ideologically bound That's right. uh, and, and other things. Uh, the, in different countries, you wouldn't preface it along the racial lines. I think that's exactly right. And you look at Dr. Martin Luther King and you look at the struggle of the civil rights movement and it allowed people like myself and you and Carrie to achieve the American dream. Why? Because if you work hard and you get the power of an education behind you, you can do anything in this country. And I listened to your monologue for this uh, block here and I thought to myself, I wonder what that gentleman's upbringing was like and I wonder if he had been given the same opportunities that we've been blessed to have had and what can we do with our children now who are looking for that ability to achieve the American dream of if you work hard and you believe right. in yourself, you can actually make it in this country. Right. Well, and, and Ron, there have been researchers at Harvard who have recently discovered what conservatives have been saying for 50 years, which is the strongest variable as to whether someone is able to rise above their social class mm -hmm. is if they have a two-parent home, is yes. whether they have that nuclear family that is preserved. And this is something that, uh, sadly, is so common to have a broken family within the black community. Something like 72 to 75 percent of black Black babies are born to single homes, yes. and this is a function of liberal programs started by LBJ. Sadly, this is a, a heritage that we have to clean up. This is something, it, and it, cross, it cuts across all racial right. lines. It doesn't matter whatever race you are. If you're born into a broken home, this is the strongest factor as to whether you stay in a, a broken home. And by the same token, and one of the big issues this election season was the issues in rural America with, right. with, with white folks in this country and the heroin epidemic and things like sure. that. I mean, you know, it's... So, you know, I, I think when people, I felt like in the 70s and the 80s in particular, it, it was all about, well, this particular race, and, and, but it feels like there's something else here. And, and it's well, worrisome because we've got to fix it for everyone. Right, and, that, and that's what the Harvard researchers found. It didn't matter the race. It was whether right. the, that child was born to a broken home. White babies, Latino babies, African American babies, this was the strongest variable, is the strength of the family. And I will say, you know, to your point on the American dream, mm -hmm. Arthur Brooks from the American Enterprise Institute has shown this through his research as well. He's, he's a public policy, you know, right. wonk. It's faith, family, community, yep. and work. Those are the four ingredients. It's not. Are you confident, person. Ron, that, that it will get better, uh, that, that Donald Trump will be focused on this enough to the degree that you want the federal government focused on something like this to help it get better? Yes, actually I am. I, I do believe that the Department of Justice with the last eight years has had their finger on the scales. They have openly been doing ideological um, distribution of justice rather than looking at all Americans with the blind scales of justice and right. saying we're going to do this equally. Yes, I think Donald Trump with Jeff Sessions as our next Attorney General is actually going to do more to help people of color and all Americans yeah. by being equitable and being just. I do love the the idea, guys, of a federal government or a president saying, hey, we're not going to be paternalistic, we're not going to do it, but I'm going to create an environment. Yes. You're willing to pull yourself up by the bootstraps, you'll succeed. Thank you both very much. Good to see you. Thank you.